Welcome to Vantage Point Podcast, a podcast brought to you by NWR Communications and 92 Studio. This podcast is intended for education and entertainment purposes only and does not constitute financial advice. G'day and welcome to the latest episode of Vantage Point. On today's podcast, we have Accusensis, an artificial intelligence technology company that's developed road safety solutions. We're joined by its founder and managing director, Alexander Yannick, who joins us fresh off a significant multi-enforcement contract win in WA, Western Australia. During the podcast, he discusses what the company's achieved since he was last on the podcast some 16 months ago, including contract wins, technology development, and the growth potential in offshore markets. We hope you enjoy. G'day, Alex, and welcome back on Vantage Point. I think it was episode four that you last joined us, July 2023, 16 months has gone pretty fast. I'm sure a lot has happened within AccuCensus. Maybe give us a bit of an update on uh, what's what's changed since July 23. Thanks for having me, Simon. Yeah, quite a lot's been happening over the last 16 months. Uh, If I think about the the customers, we had the ACT uh, go live with mobile phone enforcement. Um, We had South Australia and those sites were installed towards um, the end of last financial year and are now operating live and trying to deter drivers in South Australia from using their, their mobile phones. We had Queensland go live with uh, transportable speed enforcement with, with good results in changing driver behaviour there. And offshore, uh, in, in the US, we went from one enforcing customer with North Carolina to three with Georgia and Arkansas joining, joining North Carolina and using AccuCensus services. In the UK, we signed our first uh, ongoing enforcement uh, contract or customer with Devon and Cornwall Police. Maybe on the road worker safety side as well. Yeah, road worker safety. So we had the, the new technology line that we've been developing and uh, we had a, a pilot contract with Fulton Hogan that has been seeing us take that technology through different road work sites in, in Victoria and put it through its paces. And so now that we feel quite confident about releasing that product in, in early 2025 to a wider audience and a, and a wider market, starting with Australia. Trying to think. Internally, we had quite a lot of changes mm. through FY24. Uh, we were really trying to scale our business to support you know, a larger scale and an international scale. Yeah. For example, we moved to 24-7 help desk operations. So it didn't matter what happened anywhere in the world, we would have support there to um, help that installation or whatever the customer might need. We uh, increased the bench strength in, mm. in the executive team. We brought on... Uh, COO in, in Matthew Higgins came across from Tesla. So he's in, been adding a lot of value to, to the company as well. Um, and then we uh, Anita, had some, CFO. Yeah, and yep. we had Anita join us as a CFO. We got through multiple ISO certifications. So ISO 9001 quality, work health safety, environment, and quite crucially, um, 27,001, so information, technology, and security. And that's something that even some major multinational players don't uh, have that same level of certification that, that we do now. So it sounds like uh, sounds like things have been pretty quiet uh, then at Acu Census headquarters. When you step back and talk it like that, um, a bloody lot yeah, has teams, happened. The team's achieved quite a lot, actually, in, in 16 months. They've done really well. And I will have forgotten a bunch of things. Yeah, exactly. You know, just as you're trying to make me reel them off yeah. right here and then. That's a good uh, a good problem S- to have. Scale up of the year in Victoria. That's from, true. From the governor and the treasurer. That was great. That's uh, a listed company. Winning that award is always not not a bad sort of marketing exercise as well. Um, there's been a heap that's been happening within Accusensus when we look at it that way. Maybe you, if you can just sort of recap. Yeah, we talk about the fatal five uh, in the Accusensus sort of you know, focus point. Just talk us to about our products um, yeah, in terms of yeah, what we're targeting there. Yeah, sure. So uh, obviously what we're supplying to our government partners is technological solutions for yep. enforcement to change the dangerous driver behaviours. So when you look at road fatalities and injuries, uh, the majority of them are caused by drivers doing five, you know, typically illegal and dangerous yep. acts. So you've got speeding and... Yep. There've been lots of companies supplying speed enforcement for 40, 50 or more years, but then nobody has then tackled the next mm. four of the fatal five, really. And so until AccuCensus came along in 2018, 2019 and introduced mobile phone enforcement. So that's sort of technological automated enforcement to try and um, target distraction. Yep. And mobile phones being the predominant cause of distraction these days by drivers. 
Um, then the, the next one is seatbelt enforcement. So more than 20% of people killed inside a vehicle in, in a car mm. crash are not wearing a seatbelt, even though That's in Australia, 99 plus percent of drivers are wearing a seatbelt. Mm. So if we can just convince you know, that remaining 1% to Change put on their seatbelts, yeah. you can dramatically drop road fatalities. So right there, we've got three of the fatal five mm. covered um, from AccuSensor solutions and just one solution will do all three at the same time. Yep. And then uh, we're trying to work on impaired driving, so drug and alcohol, and then the last one for us will be fatigue. Yep. Um, and where does sort of rail crossings fit in there in terms of a focus? Yes, yeah, so railway crossing monitoring is something that we've been supplying for several years now. It started with the Australian Rail Track Corporation coming to us with a problem that they had, yep. which was near misses and actual incidents between road and, and rail. And so they don't happen, the actual hits don't happen that often, but the consequence is really high mm. when it does happen. And But the near misses occur very routinely. Mm. And so we've been... Um, utilising the same trailer-based enforcement technology to apply at railway crossings and we can monitor the stop sign, we can monitor the signals and we can see what cars are, are going through and what they're doing. And so uh, initially that was providing data for the Rail Track Corporation, which they could then go to authorities like Vic Roads, Department of Transport Main Roads in mm. Queensland or Transport New South Wales, and they could say, hey, guys, we have a serious problem. Could you please do something mm. about the level of non-compliance by drivers at our railway crossings. And from there, they we've had um, contracts with some of those road authorities, mm. like Victoria and like um, Transport New South Wales, that then go to another step where they collect data on their own behalf to then say, okay, what can we do with education? Mm. This local community routinely, or people in this community, will routinely go through this crossing. Yep. So you can do targeted marketing, education, even direct intervention to somebody. And then the final stage when all of those things is not working mm. is to actually turn to enforcement. enforcement. Yep. Uh, and the jurisdictions are now starting to examine that. And obviously in the AccuSensus solution, yep. you have something that's fully enforcement grade already. So it feels like uh, it's a real process in terms of yeah that, that specific sector of you know, crawl, walk, run, um, that, that's and it exactly scales it. over time. Yeah. Yep. And that's just dealing with government and enforcement yeah, exactly. in general and most things are crawl walk run in our space yeah and and when we um when we talk about the revenue model um so i was looking earlier uh i think it was what fy fy 20 was 2.3 million of revenue um and then it was 28.7 in fy 22 42 in fy 23 and 50 just just under 50 in fy 24 can you just talk us through the revenue model yeah, across the different you know, different products? Um, but is it a clip of the ticket? Is it you know, te fully technology service? You know, what does that sort of look like? We have a very consistent revenue model, which is this all-inclusive monthly service-based yep. model, basically. And I think every one of our clients, or maybe almost every one of our clients, has been along those lines where AccuSensus owns the camera mm. equipment and we go and deploy it where the customer wants us to, and then we maintain it, that equipment, we certify it for enforcement operations, and we do the first level of human review of the data that comes off it. At the end of the day, what we're supplying our customers is enforcement-grade prosecutable data yep. or evidence of drivers doing something illegal, which the customer can then use to, to, to try and deter or stop that behaviour, which is typically fines and notices in, in the mail. And we just charge a, basically a fixed monthly fee, which is on a long-term contract. So our contracts typically have base durations between three and five years, and then typically there are option periods. So the customer will add plus one year, plus one year is the most common. And, and perhaps when we look at that, um, there's been a, a lot of sort of enhancements or additions in terms of, you know, whether it's plus one or plus two, but also... Um, probably most importantly from a scale or leverage perspective, you know, upsell in terms of getting in there on speed uh, and then selling on mobile, you know, seatbelt. Um, how, how does the company sort of look at that? Yeah, I, first and foremost, what we're trying to do is help our yep. government customers actually solve their challenge and their problem, which yep. is stop road fatalities and, and injuries. And But what we have seen is that um, when we secure a new customer with a contract, 
um, typically that won't be the whole value of services and things mm. that we that we provide to to that customer. So most of our contracts do expand over time from the initial contract, and that's the customer might add more trailers, they might add more fixed sites over time as they realise they need to go out and deter mm. the, dri the driver behaviours in other locations. Um, they might also add services. So you've already got a trailer there by the side of the road enforcing mobile phone use, but the solution can simultaneously mm. enforce seatbelt. So we had New South Wales activate seatbelt several years after they contracted us for mobile phone use. Yep. So it's just a, a value add option that obviously for us, it's basically like a software module yep. that we'll activate uh, and charge a bit for. All the solutions out there at the moment in, in Australia, so we're in half of the states and territories mm. right now actively enforcing every day, um, they could all be doing simultaneously phone, seatbelt, speed, average speed. And so those options are there for the different government partners and customers we have for when they're ready, culturally, mm. societally, Budget, politically, yeah, yeah to, to activate those things. And, and when we look at yeah, Australia, it's fair to say you, you're dominating there. Um, yeah, how, how do we sort of compare, you know, US and UK or Europe, they're much bigger markets, obviously. Um, how, do, how do you sort of sell into those and, and how do they sort of look in terms of, mm. you know, they're broken up differently? Is it state by state? You know, is it troop? You know, how does that sort of look? Yeah, so we have a offshore, we have a particular focus in the United States and the United Kingdom. Yep. That's where we have our own offices, our own people, subsidiaries established. And so we have a direct to market approach for uh, the US and, and the UK. Yep. Um, we also have a direct to market approach for New Zealand and, and Canada as well. But in terms of where we're focusing efforts on growing the business, it's in the UK and, and the US. Um, and those businesses are in their early stages compared to where the Australian businesses are. Mm. We've got this kind of very well established um, Australian business, which is quite large. You know, it's one of the largest in traffic mm. enforcement now. Uh, it's profitable. Yeah. While offshore, we've got th our two subsidiaries. We're we're growing them. They're running multiple years behind um, the Australian business, but we do hope to see that same growth curve ideally in in our offshore markets that we saw in Australia as those markets get familiar with the technology. And introducing new technology yeah. to government for the first time, it for is, first like mover. you said earlier, you know, it's a crawl, walk, one, yeah. run type strategy where um, somebody, you need to find somebody who's willing to go mm. first. And we're fortunate that we've had that sort of anchor yeah. customer in both the United States and now the United Kingdom. So, and that sort of provides a bit of cover for other jurisdictions nearby to um, adopt it as yep. well because they can say, That's hey, been de yeah. somewhat, yeah. So if you're in Georgia, you can say, well, our neighbour North Carolina has been using this with great success for mm. the last year, so it's safe for us to do it too. And they can see that there is no political blowback to mm. these cameras being introduced. And it's a slightly different model over there that um, our contract in North Carolina is uh, enhancing and enabling police to do yep. their job. So it's will detect, you know, which when trucks go past our system, because that's a truck-based yep. contract, uh, we're assessing is the truck driver wearing a seatbelt, are they using the mobile phone, are they speeding, um, and then pass that information on to the troopers who are waiting a few hundred metres down the road. Yep, it's the, okay. the, old, the old school, what feels like old school here in, in Australia in terms of the yeah. um, it, communicating via the phone and saying, yeah, get, get the Mercedes, drive them past. Is. Yeah, but nobody will complain about police pulling over a truck driver for using a mobile phone. Yeah. That is um, a very politically low risk. very acceptable yeah. to uh, that a professional truck driver should be driving yeah. in the safest possible manner. North Carolina have had three of our trailers mm. across a state that is the size, you know, it's comparable to one of our mm. states, you know, Victoria type sizing, right, in population and it's almost similar in land area. And... Since using our technology, the number of citations the police have issued to truck drivers, mm. whole of state numbers have gone up by about an order of magnitude in mm. mobile phone and in seatbelt. So they went from very little to quite a lot just by introducing technology mm. from us. So it really does help police do their job. And so you talked about US. Um, how does UK, you know, is it county by county or how does that look in terms of, you know, from a penetration perspective? 
Yeah, it, it actually is surprisingly similar in that mm. in the US we're targeting the 50 states yep. as, as our customers. Uh, in the UK, we've got 43 counties as our sort of headline most obvious customers. And the UK is running about a year behind the US in that we've just in the last few months signed our first ongoing first customer, which is Devon and Cornwall. And then there's another nine counties that have utilised our technology and enforced with it, but they're not in an ongoing uh, enforcement contract with us. We've got another nine counties that have um, experienced and tested the technology but haven't actually gone to that step of you know, mm. sending out the enforcement notice. And then there's the remaining 23 counties, I think it is, that um, haven't yet tested the technology at all. Uh, and so I guess for us, we're trying to say, well, can we now that we've got Dan mm. and Cornwall using it and they can see they're getting really positive media that um, hopefully, as it's only just gone live, hopefully we'll see the driver behaviours shift like we have in other jurisdictions mm. and see the the prevalence of drivers using their phones really drop and that everybody starts wearing their seatbelt and then eventually reductions in crashes and injuries. Um, and then hopefully the other counties will watch Denver we'll adopt as well. and will follow that same adoption. Uh, certainly uh, see a lot of it on, on LinkedIn and in the media from Jeff uh, within yeah. the, the UK, which is good to see. Um, and maybe if we just sort of pivot back um, to you know, new developments and whatnot, you know, the road worker safety solution. Can you just give us, obviously it's with Fulton Hogan here, can you just give us a bit of a, yeah, what does it actually do? How does it actually work? From the start, in founding AccuSensus and the founding sort of team, we yep. wanted to introduce multiple pioneering solutions in, into this world that have some kind of social impact. Yep. And so the road worker safety solution line is the second one now coming through, basically with the first being enforcement solutions and pioneering in that. In road worker safety, we looked at, okay, workers by the side of the road have one of the highest risk occupations in Australia and one of the highest risk occupations in the world. There are mm. fatalities, there are serious injuries, there are huge numbers of near misses. And that's from um, cars coming into the work site and hitting the workers, but also from plant and machinery mm. inside the site going, hitting, hitting the workers. So we've developed a solution that keeps track of all of the general public cars transiting around those workers we keep track of all the plant and machinery in the site moving around. And then we know where every worker is and every worker has a wearable device uh, that they're wearing. And that's a proprietary AccuCentus wearable. It is, yeah. it's hardware that we've developed. Yep. Uh, and that had to solve a number of quite mm. unique challenges. It's not as simple as taking a smartwatch or mm, a mobile just... phone or something. There's really some quite deep challenges in locating the worker accurately and communicating to them quickly and reliably mm. over distances in roadwork sites. Um, and so we've done all that. And so at the end of the day, the worker wears this device that gives them about a five second head up, heads up yep. that they might be about to get hit by a general public vehicle or by plant machinery in the site. So it's sort of like technological PPE, mm. personal protective equipment. And then what the solution is also doing is providing a data layer just to the road constructor it's somebody like a tier one, like Fulton Hogan. Yep. And so they can see at any given time, what is the danger level like on their site? What's happening on their site? Where are the vehicles? Where are the workers? Where's the plant and machinery? And they can use that data for a number of other very useful things for them. It's pretty uh, It's pretty powerful, particularly you know, when we think about what happened uh, on the freeways of Victoria with the, the police and the, the truck, that if they had had that you know, sort of five seconds, six seconds heads up to you know, duck for cover sort of thing. That's exactly it. So... Um, that scenario, first responders, mm. is certainly um, something that we're trying to take the technology into as one of the most obvious next markets mm. that can be done very quickly. It's the exact same technology, but say mounted in the roof bar of a police car or yeah. on the back of the RACQ or NRMA yeah. or mm. RACV vehicle um, and then providing protection to, to that worker by the roadside there. Um, and still to be proven in terms of you know, a commercial contract per se, um, but in the full year results presentation, we talked, uh, or you were quoted um, in terms of your view around um, yeah the potential revenue opportunity or um, yeah the the size of of the road worker safety solution that you know it would be the equivalent or bigger uh, than yeah the whole of Australia um, yeah uh, traditional side. What makes what gives you that confidence? Yeah, so what we have at the moment is a situation where there are tens of thousands 
of workers on road work sites by the side of the road every single day mm. in, in Australia. Um, and the total addressable market for this, depending which metric you yeah. take, is <clears throat> orders of magnitude larger than what is traffic enforcement. You know, traffic enforcement, while it's been very good for AccuSense, mm. is a very niche industry. Yeah, I think we have, what, by 2026, $7.6 billion total addressable mm. market in enforcement cameras. Uh, while you take just the first level of um, safety, mm. you know, work health safety tools, and you've got 40 something billion dollars. And then you've got the traffic management industry, which is now in the hundreds of billions. And then you've got total amount of spend on road construction globally mm. is like 1.3 trillion or something around that. And so we're saying for you know, just a few dollars a day as the road constructor, yeah. you can keep all your employees safer. Um, and yeah, the value of that is just enormous in terms of you know, avoiding an injury, avoiding a death. And I, I suppose the other thing as well is that given you've got the data and the near misses and that sort of stuff, you can change the, you know, basically the operating manual or um, yeah, the way that they go to work. Um, yeah, on we site. can be proactive and um, make every site safer mm. on something that really does kill and injure lots of people every year on a global scale. So today, Alex, um, you know, there's a little bit of news in terms of WA tender win. Uh, maybe if you could just talk us through, you know, what does it look like? Um, how long has it been in the making? Um, you know, and you've, you've sewn up the majority well and truly of the Australian state. So it's an incredible achievement. Well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, really, really proud and happy to be working with the Road Safety Commission in West Australia and West Australia, West Australia Police uh, to introduce this new technology. It has been something that WA has been working on for several years. It started really when we introduced the pilot of uh, trailer-based enforcement back in 2022, 2023. And that was quite a unique pilot because it was the first time that, as far as I know, anywhere that people had tried to do um, mobile phone enforcement, seatbelt enforcement, speed enforcement, and average speed enforcement, mm. all from the same platform at the same time. And so this is actually West Australia leading the mm. way in the Swiss Army knife of traffic enforcement. And uh, West Australia took the results of that pilot and analysed them, turned it into a tender process. And so obviously we responded to that tender process, open competitive process, uh, but, yeah, very pleased to be selected as, as the provider for Western Australia. And so we have um, six trailers going out initially in the start of 2025, um, and those trailers will be simultaneously enforcing phone, seatbelt, speed and average speed. And that's targeting now more than half of mm. the Fatal Five in one deployment and I really think this will be a game changer for road safety in, in West Australia, but also it importantly shows now the other well, jurisdictions sense, yeah. what is possible. And so you've got Queensland, New South Wales, ACT and South Australia all have the same technology the ability, yeah. that could simultaneously be used for all of those modes mm. uh, already. And I think a lot of jurisdictions in Australia have been looking, can we do transportable mm. average speed as a very fair method to do speed enforcement, but also you're covering a vast distance in it. And this will set the way. It'll be the first time it's been done in yeah, Australia. I think um, it's a big difference in terms of when you know that it's fixed and you get the warnings in terms of yeah, average speed enforcement you know, coming up when you're going down to you know, Lawn or wherever it is, down to Geelong, um, you automatically change your behaviour, which is yep. a good thing, right? But um, it's about you know, a broader focus across you know, all of the roads. That's it. And yeah, West Australia is, is vast. Yeah. And these units will be going right through the state mm. in all the different corners of the state of West Australia. Yeah. No, that's uh, a great achievement. Um, so, Alex, if, if we look at, you know, uh, I spoke at the top around you know, the July 23, the share price was you know, around 65 cents. Um, today it's sitting at uh, roughly you know, 90 cents. Um, yeah, looks great. Um, yeah, it's 45% gain or whatever it is. Um, there's been some wild fluctuations in terms of the share price in between then. I think you know, a couple of months later, it hit like a dollar twenty or something, and yeah, you know, all the way down to fifty cents. Yeah, you know, so we've we've ridden it out. What have you sort of learnt on the ASX journey? Yeah, you know, now you're somewhat seasoned. Um, what have you sort of learnt um, from all of that? 
Yeah, I guess we, we came out with the IPO yep. in early 2023, January 12th, 2023. So 80, 80 with, cents yeah, issue price, yeah. 80 cents. And we've grown the business a long way mm. since that, that listing. As as you said, I mean, that's now almost two years. Exactly. And you know, what was our forecast revenue for the IPO was $37 million. Mm. We upgraded to 42 then we delivered okay. 50 And we've said in the investor deck, of the FY24 mm. investor deck, that we're going to continue to grow Australia, uh, that we're going to grow the US and the UK 100% you know, in, in each of those mm. markets. And we've got Guardian coming along. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, and so for me, I think there's still a bit to go in, in the share price to reflect the potential value of, of AccuSensors. Well, I, I suppose when you look at it, you, know, you listed at 80 cents, you know, the stock's 90 cents. And yeah. we talked at the top about the achievements, you know, over just the last 16 months. Yeah. There's a fair bit uh, that's been backfilled there. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks good over a 15 month period. Yeah. But going back to the IPO time, it probably can still, yeah. um, a bit more value could be reflected. Yeah. I think it comes down to okay, you've got this um, stable, growing, profitable Australian business, mm. which is a really great business. And uh, to some extent, that is funding us introducing several initiatives that over the long term will pay back, you know, the three to five year yep. time horizon. We've got the US, the UK, both larger markets in Australia, right, that we mm. would hope to see our businesses grow in those markets to be as big or bigger than Australia. And then you've got brand new technologies that will come down the pipe from AccuSensors, mm. the most obvious being road worker protection. Yep. Um, and so it'll be exciting to see where that grows. But to your original question, which is what have I learned about being an ASX listed CEO? I think um, if part of the, the journey for us is that I'm conservative and yep. the, the team is pretty conservative and we also like to follow the rules as closely as we possibly can. Yeah. And so that means, you know, if information has gone public that we have to announce it, um, even if that's an impartial deal or something yep. like that. And yeah, that hit us to our detriment earlier in the year yep. uh, where the share price dropped quite significantly. And we have shifted or I've certainly shifted yep. how I'm talking to investors about the different deals in the pipeline because every investor always asks, what's next? Like, what's yeah. in the pipe? What's, yeah. what's coming? What's coming? I said, look, um, I don't like to tell to talk to specifics on pipeline. Mm. Of given the guidance that we Australia will grow, yeah. Given the guidance that will grow a hundred percent in the UK and a hundred percent in in the US, uh, but on the individual deals, you know, everybody will find out at the same time when yep. it's announced. Yeah, exactly. Basically. And setting the right expectation in terms yeah. of yeah. Uh, everyone's on the same footing. And that we'll follow the announcement rules. That if it's material, it'll yep. be announced. Um, if it's not material, well, you might have to wait until the quarterly or the half year. Yeah. Um, to find out about it. No, that'll make sense. And probably just final question, Matt joining from Tesla, why why join, yeah, yeah, with all due respect, a little Victorian company, admittedly, startup of the year, but why join AccuSensors from Tesla? Yeah, he moved from reporting to Elon Musk at one point to reporting to Alexander Yannick. Um, that's a scary not, thought. Not sure if that's an upgrade. We'll, we'll see. I think for him, um, he has a personal connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to road trauma, much like myself. Yeah. Um, and he was after a, a new challenge. He's, he's moved back to Australia in the last few years from working overseas and you know, he's done a lot with Tesla. Yeah. Growing the factories in, in the US, in China, in Germany, and he brings this incredible skill set to us that we're very fortunate to have mm. advantage of. Uh, and already he's only, he just passed probation actually technically. So yeah, he's six months in he's only, fresh and in. he has changed a number of things through through our team and through our process. Yeah. And um, I think that will really help us grow and scale the company. Now that's his his whole remit in AccuSensors mm. is to scale the company and enable it to serve all of its customers and continue to delight them. Well, my half of the job is to try and grow it, Deliver, which yeah. is in the sales side and in the technology side. And just before uh, I ended there, um, just in terms of 
you know, how you compete against these, you know, um, multi-billion dollar, you know, global, you know, significant companies. How, how do you sort of view it? I've heard you in the past talk about, you know, sort of a bit of, you know, what I term the intangibles in terms of having the CEO, you know, front up to the meetings. I saw on LinkedIn, um, we were in you know, Germany in a patrol car for eight hours with, um, you know, one of the, the sheriffs or, you know, the head police there in terms of, you know, understanding and knowledge, knowledge sharing. How do you sort of, how do you look at that? What's your view on that? Yeah, for us, we're very, very mission focused. Mm. You know, our job, our whole goal is the same goal that our customers ultimately have as well, which is to reduce injuries and fatalities and, and to save lives on the road and to keep following that, that bouncing ball, which means that every engagement you have with your customer is very much on, you're on the same side of the table. Mm. Almost, it's like, how do we work together to make this happen? So you're not going back to your contract. You're not arguing about how do we vary this mm. because if we can see that the customer needs a certain feature and it will make the end result better, then um, we will do that, right? And so we're good to work with, I think, with, with the customers. And then word gets around. It's almost like mm. karma, right? Yeah. Like if you do the right thing, those customers will tell the other customers. Mm. Everybody talks in this industry. It's pretty like, small. When you talk about the US and states, so, similar, yeah. You know, if... I don't know, let's say like if somebody in New Zealand wants to ask Queensland or New South mm. Wales, what was your experience like with AccuSensors? Yeah. You know, I think that there, it'll come back really good mm. and all of that helps in, in your approach. And then just we build a really, really good product and we have a, lo a lot of smart people doing a lot of really good things to have the best solution as well as the best customer approach. Mm. It sounds like you, you're playing the long game, but in terms of the results that you've driven in a short period of time, yeah, and obviously off the, the back of the wind today with WA, uh, there's a lot, uh, a lot to be yielded uh, from all of that work. So well done, Alex, and, and thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Simon.